Helen, I wish to extend a warm welcoming is a testament to the care. His Excellency Ambassador Park, Ambassador of uh, the Republic of Korea to Fiji, Mr. Parmesh Kumar, the Principal Nawai Secondary School, School Management Rep and the Trustee uh, who is present here. I, pay, uh, I actually pay my respect to the founders of uh, this school. 45 years ago, 25 uh, gentlemen came together as young people and they had a strong vision and the vision was to educate the children and that led to the establishment of this school. So I pay my deepest respect uh, to the founders of this school. Teachers, ancillary staff, ministry officials, dear students, a very good morning to each one of you. Uh, it, it is indeed an honor for me to visit your school as schools opened its doors for years 12 and 13 classes just about a week ago. Today's visit is multifold. First one is to do with the handing over of the equipments uh, we have received from the Korean government. Second purpose is to address the teachers and the students, and of course, the school management team. So I'll start off with the first objective, or the first purpose as to why I'm here. And for that, I would like to thank uh, the Republic of Korea and its people uh, for, for the assistance. As you've heard from Ambassador Park, Fiji's relationship with Korea started in 1971. And this year, we are celebrating 50th anniversary in terms of our close cooperation and the strong French, uh, friendship that we have developed between the two countries. And I congratulate Ambassador Park for hosting a, a ceremonious event just last week to mark this occasion. Um, the contribution made by the Korean government and its people to education is greatly appreciated. As you have heard, the, the, the assistance comes under the small grant scheme. And uh, under this assistance, we are actually helping 65, 65 schools which are remotely located or are in the rural setting because we do understand that schools that are in the urban areas, they are often well resourced. But the schools that are out in remote and rural areas, they are often not re well resourced. But it was so, I'm so pleased to hear uh, from the uh, principal that this is one school that sets an example for the rest of the schools in, in rural and remote areas in terms of your IT development. It's, it's very impressive with the list that he read out, what all you have in a classroom. This is amazing. And um, I thank the principal for uh, venturing out in IT area and focusing on e-learning. Uh, e-learning is the future. Uh, we have to look at the future in two perspectives. First one is the students that we teach. These are the students who are tech savvy, uh, they know technology better than most of us. And most adults, we do seek assistance from our own children or from our students. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we need to prepare ourselves uh, for, the, for the new uh, tech savvy uh, children. And for that, I think this school is very well prepared. And thank you uh, for the vision that you had. I mean, if you had not invested in the IT technology well in advance, then probably we would have been struggling during this pandemic. But your foresight speaks volume about your vision uh, for this school. So thanks a lot. Um, I would like to address the students who are present here. Uh, it's so nice to see you in your uniform. 
and so nice to see you in a class, you know, in a, in a, in a school environment. Uh, whenever we passed uh, schools previously, we used to see schools looking really sad without the children. But you have come in and now the school looks rather full uh, with our uh, children being in the classroom as well as in the um, school environment. Uh, I would like to um, encourage you to uh, focus on your studies. I know there's a lot of anxiety in terms of uh, your future because uh, you are the ones who are suffering the most in terms of uncertainty the pandemic has caused. Uh, you know for sure that if you are in year 12 or year 13, you have to sit for the final exam before you can move on uh, to the university. We all know that. But in your case, you must have been wondering, when will the school open and when do I get started? Finally, we have opened the school and you can get started with your studies with all the assistance, all the assistance from your teachers, from the head of school, and from the ministry. Uh, it is it's going to be very challenging for you, but you are very strong, willed people, young people, determined, committed. So go for it, just study hard, put in your last nine weeks of uh, <clears throat> hard work, and hopefully uh, you will uh, come out in flying colors. Uh, that's what uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, uh, with, with students and the level of anxiety they have been facing with uncertainty is enormous. And the only thing we all can do, including parents, is to support our children. And we are here to support you. Please do not hesitate to walk up to your teachers and ask them for any help that you need. Asking for assistance does not mean that you're a weak student, does not mean that you don't know. It is your right to ask questions and it is the teacher's responsibility to answer whatever you're asking for. So keep that relationship going and just focus on your studies. As you know, uh, the government has uh, announced in the last budget that we are offering 5,000 uh, TVET um, uh, scholarship through FNU. So um, those students who want to transition into TVET courses the scholarships are waiting for you. Uh, for the other students, you still have the option to uh, buy for TELS as well as for TOPAS, uh, TOPAS scheme. So work hard, focus, and uh, achieve your dreams. For the teachers and the head of school, uh, I want to thank you most sincerely for the work that you've been doing behind the scene uh, I know that uh, you've been at home, but that did not mean that you just were at home. In fact, even from home you were working. You were still working uh, through um, your uh, e-learning uh, platform. You were busy preparing uh, lessons for the children. Uh, you've been working uh, hard in preparing the weekly study packages that you were delivering. Uh, some of the teachers were assisting the government uh, when uh, the call was made at the national level, inviting teachers to come over and assist in the vaccination verification process. In fact, some teachers went ahead and even helped during contact tracing in the initial uh, days. So teachers have truly shown that teaching is a noble profession. No matter how hard the situation is, they stand up to challenge, and you've proven that. So thank you uh, very, very much for your contribution to teaching and learning. I call my teachers COVID warriors because they kept the teaching going uh, while uh, there was uh, so much of uncertainty. But you made it uh, look so easy. You made the children believe that uh, education is something they cannot let go, even at the toughest time. And you continued um, instilling that belief in our children. So thank you, Vinakovakalevu, Tanewa, for that. Finally, I want to uh, also thank the school management. Just imagine, if we did not have the vision of our Board of Governors or the, or the school management committee, 
there would be no school. We wouldn't be talking about Nawai Secondary today. But it was just a group of people who came together and had this vision that, look, we need to set up a school. And they had to fork out money from their own pocket to start, in a very humble way, a school for the children of this community. I, very seldom do we come across uh, people in this day and age who would be making such investment in education. But today we recognize and we acknowledge the contribution the committee of Nawai had made. And uh, with their guidance, we'll be able to grow this school even bigger. I always say that education is a partnership between the school management uh, committee, or you, you can call it the board of governance, um, also the Ministry of Education and the parents. So let's continue this partnership and let's continue educating our children. And as you have heard from Ambassador Park, education is very, very important for the social economic growth of any country. And we have seen how Korea grew despite not having many resources, but what he meant was natural resources. And they depended on human resources. And we can see where Korea is today. And that is our vision as a country, to create this knowledge-based society and to, to ensure that when our children come out, they'll be able to join the workforce or they can be the creators of employment themselves. So with these words, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely want to thank each one of you, and particularly Ambassador Park and the Republic of Korea uh, for the assistance. Thank you.